got the banks down by almost a percent and a half in the majors as well. But let's check in on bond markets now. We've got Simon Michelle from Think Security standing by for us at the moment. And uh, Simon, we're continuing to await that decision from the US Fed to increase Fed funds later on in the week. Where to next, do you think? Yeah, look, it's interesting, Kate, and uh, obviously I think most of the market now very much of the view that we'll get that uh, tightening by the Fed in the US, increasing rates likely by 0.25 of a percent uh, off of virtual zero, and that'll give the uh, Fed a chance to reset their messaging around where interest rates are likely to go through 2016. Uh, looking at the yield curve, uh, certainly doesn't suggest we're likely to see a flurry of further interest rate increases. Uh, it could be very much uh, that we see the Fed uh, position markets for very steady rates through 2016. I certainly don't think this move uh, that we expect this week is likely to lead to any uh, a succession of further increases throughout next year. Let's talk a, a bit about the strong demand for US Treasuries at the moment because that's been pushing yields lower ahead of the move, hasn't it? It has, and we've actually seen that flow through into our market this morning as well, and we've seen now yields off across the five in the ten year down about five basis points. So moving in the opposite direction as you would expect, uh, given that we are likely to see the Fed move uh, on Wednesday their time. Uh, and it really reflects a bit of repositioning um, prior to that announcement and also uh, that uh, weakness we're seeing in uh, commodities as well flowing over into people seeking a bit of a safe haven. So we're seeing a bit of a sellout of more of the uh, risky asset classes and that money's making it into bonds. Uh, that demand is push pushing bond prices up and uh, yields down. Okay, I also wanted to ask you about the the talk around this high yield credit space at the moment. Uh, we've heard Carl Icahn uh, speaking about it and he says things are ready to explode. It's at real risk at the moment as Janet Yellen prepares to, to make this announcement. Do you think those risks are, are being overblown? They're certainly making headlines. Well, they are, absolutely. And I think people are very conscious uh, at uh, those sorts of cash movements we see leading up into these uh, announcements. And uh, really this has sort of been occurring over the last couple of weeks, really, Kate, as we've seen credit spread wide and as investors have uh, taken money out of uh, more risky asset classes um, I think it's also been driven as I mentioned before a little bit by this uh, you know lower commodities as well uh, causing concern around some of the emerging uh, uh, markets as well some of the developing nations and their ability uh, to meet um, debt requirements as uh, as they fall due uh, and so we're seeing a bit of consolidation happening and uh, you know we're likely to see a little bit of a an unwind post this announcement once that uncertainty is removed from the market uh, but I think uh, you know at the end of the day it does reflect a bit of a view that things are getting a little bit more volatile in some of those uh, areas of the global economy and people are just uh, repositioning out seeking the safety and comfort of bonds uh, and waiting to see how this uh, Fed announcement plays out this week. Yeah, fair enough and investors increasingly moving out of these uh, risk assets even equities and I guess that means we, we might see continued volatility over the next couple of months. Look, I think so, absolutely. You know, um, these significant uh, changes in uh, uh, rates and, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's put it bluntly, the US has not uh, moved these rates up for almost a decade now. It's going to have a substantial impact on money flows. It's uh, the US Treasury yield curve is the benchmark for a lot of other nations of their bond borrowing and their uh, lending margins. So, you know, I think you're going to see a bit of volatility as markets reposition and, uh, uh, you know, get used to this new environment uh, and uh, look at what is likely to happen to rates, uh, you know, at the next, when are we likely to see the next movement in uh, US rates? Will it be 2016 or are we likely to see very, very steady uh, rates right through uh, the whole year? And what about uh, rates here at home? Of course, the employment data we've seen out lately just continues to, to back the case that the RBA is either going to, to keep rates on hold for some time to come or potentially the next move we see may be a hike. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, the narrative certainly moved away from this uh, speculation about a further rate cut. And uh, I have noticed also a number of commentators suggesting the next move from the RBA could be uh, northward. I, I think certainly the Fed move, if we get that uh, this week, and obviously the uh, better, stronger employment trend, as you mentioned, and also the uh, stronger uh, third quarter or September quarter uh, growth figures we had, certainly take a bit of pressure off the RBA for lower rates. I cer certainly think they uh, flow into the narrative we've had from the RBA that, you know, they're pretty comfortable where rates are. Uh, they certainly don't see the need to make any adjustment in rates at the moment. 
Um, they've certainly suggested that they're willing to move these rates down if it's required, but I think all of these elements we see at the moment uh, minimise that risk. So I think, uh, uh, you know, from the RBA, we're likely to see fairly steady as she goes. All right, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, Simon Kate. Michelle there from FIG with the latest on fixed income. We'll hot off the press. Industry super.